A Canadian philanthropist is being called the Jewish Schindler. Yank Barry has helped nearly 1,000 refugees escape war-torn regions of the Middle East, including Syria, Iraq, and Iran. Many of the refugees are Christians who face persecution, even death by terrorist groups, including ISIS. Yank Barry joins us now from Bulgaria, where he's paying to lodge many of the refugees in two hotels. Uh, Mr. Barry, I have to ask, well, first off, congratulations uh, and thank you for what you're doing, but how and why did you get involved in this? Well, you know, um, Bulgaria, Bulgaria helped several members of my family that were living in, in Germany in World War II, and, and they protected the Jews. And, and I, I, came, I came here because I was in Libya. I don't know if you remember the Benghazi Six, the five Christian nurses, Bulgarian nurses, and Palestinian doctor that were, that were convicted to death in Libya. And I, I went there, and I lobbied, and I saw Gaddafi seven times. I met him with my partner, Muhammad Ali. And um, I was honored in, Lib in, 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 in Bulgaria and fell in love with the country, came back here and moved some of our manufacturing plants here from, our, from my for-profit business that pays for all of this, and started seeing this refugee crisis. And it started getting worse and worse, and it reminded me of World War II and when they were killing, slaughtering Jews, and the world stood still, and that's what they're doing with the Syrians, and I, I just couldn't stand on the sidelines. Uh, you, you know, the stories coming out uh, from the sh that stretch of Syria and Iraq that ISIS is controlling right now of them going through and, and labeling the houses of Christians with the N for Nazarene and then telling them that uh, you, you either convert uh, or, or die. These sorts of stories, yeah, it does bring to mind uh, what, uh, what so many Jews did unfortunately go through in the Second World War. It, it is horrific, and you're right, the world is standing by. Uh, we, 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 have, we, we have submitted um, videotape to the U.N. Um, it's, it's, it's really it's more than sad where, where, the, where one of the terrorist groups, I'm not sure which one it was, but I think it was the Free Syrian Army, had um, given an ultimatum to a family to convert to Islam, and they refused, and they beheaded the father and, and played, played soccer with his head. Uh, you know, like, unreal. Like, how, how is the world just standing still? Why isn't this a lead story? Now, I understand that you are going forward and, and trying to speak to some of the rebel groups. You're going forward trying to speak to different government groups to get people out. This is uh, not just helping people that are able to get across the border. Oh, no, no. We're, we're, we're getting them out. As a matter of fact, I'll be meeting with, uh, with President Assad in the next two weeks and then with the rebel group in Geneva. Okay. So how, how does it work when dealing with the rebel groups when some of them are the ones committing these atrocities? You, you, ha you have to try. You have to try for some type of a quick fix. Um, I, I think exposing them is going to be one one accomplishment. Um, Assad is not a good guy, but I think he's been overplayed in the press as being the only bad guy. Um, you know, we have, as you said before, we have Iraqi uh, refugees who who say that when Saddam was there, we had a good life. You know, unfortunately, yeah. you know, it's a terrible life now. And uh, who knows how bad Assad really is. I do know one thing for sure. After interviewing more than 800 Christians, and not only Christians, also Druze, um, who never, ever had a problem with either the father or the son, all the problems have been coming from ISIS and um, Hezbollah, uh, Al-Qaeda, Taliban, and the Free Syrian Army. So the, the, uh, the replacement, worse than the problem that was there in the first place for, for many of these people. Uh, you know, I, I remember shortly after uh, Saddam Hussein was overthrown that discussions started uh, to take place about the persecution of Christians. And there were discussions then among some Christian aid groups about helping them flee to Canada. Many did, uh, but a lot of them said, we want to stay here because we've been here more than 2,000 years. We think we can make it work. Uh, what are you hearing now? Are, are people just hopeful to get the remaining family members out? Are they telling you that there's nothing left when you meet them? Are we talking about the Christian families? Yeah. They all want to leave. They, des they desperately want to leave. And, and, and what right now we're, we're having even a bigger problem in Turkey because they're being persecuted in the camps. So you know, and where, where, do you, where do the people that you have in Bulgaria go from here? Well, I, are you going to help I, set them up in Bulgaria? Or are you going to try and help them get to Canada? Well, what, what we've done is, so far we have been successful in moving 16 families to Sweden, Norway, Germany, and, and Austria. We got, them, we got them legal status here, we got them the right to travel, and paid for their airfares and got them there, and, 
and some of them had families, so it was a little easier. Uh, a few of them have jobs here. It's very hard. They don't speak Bulgarian. The opposition party here, which is over as of tomorrow, there's no more government in Bulgaria as of tomorrow until October, um, which in a way is good news. The opposition party were skinheads, and they hated the refugees and lobbied against us and sent hate mail and threats, and we just kept going. Um, you know, but um, I, I, think, I, think, I think it's all going to work out. I, I think it's all going to work out. I think a trip to, to see Assad and not demonize him, not come in as, as, as a hardcore correspondent and bring him a message from his people that the majority of them still care about him. The majority of them would like to come home. You know, the, the, so in answer to your question, we, I, I rented a hotel and I just bought a hotel. Um, that's only where part of them are staying. We have them in houses. Um, we also took over the former Banya refugee camp, totally renovated it, and we have 106 um, uh, orphan children, and I think 14 or 16 single mothers. So we're, we're starting to spread them out around the country. Um, they're, they're, people are paranoid here. They're afraid. They're already saying this is going to become England. We'll have two generations of, of Muslims, and, and we try to explain to them that a lot of these people are Christians. Okay. They're going to church, you know, and, 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 and we're not knocking the Muslims. I'll tell you the in, in, in our in our Bankia hotel, we have Iraqis, Iranians, Christians, Muslims, Druze, never a fight. All working you know, together. People, all working together, and, and you probably didn't hear about it because there's so much stuff happening in the world, but around three weeks ago, there was a terrible flood here in Bulgaria near the Black Sea, mm -hmm. and 12 people died, and we donated 200,000 liters of water and couldn't find a Bulgarian to volunteer. So guess who woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning and jumped on all the trucks? All of our refugees. And they delivered the water to the Bulgarians. And there was a great turn in the press. People realized, hey, these are human beings that they want to pay back. You know, they're thanking you for letting them stay here. And we're getting the message across, and I think we'll win at the end. Well, thank you for all that you're doing for these people that are facing such hardship. And best of luck to it. We'll continue to follow the story. Thank you so much. All right. Email us your thoughts on what Yank Barry is doing. Byline at sunmedia.ca. Stick around.